everyone, it's Misty, and I want to welcome you back to another episode of our Creative Weekly Wisdom event. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you how you can do ink smushing with alcohol inks. And it's it's similar to using regular inks, um, where the concept is, instead of putting it directly on your paper, you put it on the surface, and then you kind of smush or dip your paper into it. Um, it's a little bit different with alcohol inks because of their properties. Um, so first, you cannot use it on a non-pour surface unless you don't care about that surface getting stained. And you definitely want to make sure it's not a surface that's going to absorb the ink and then you can't actually get it onto your um, paper. So typically you want to use glass. Um, you can use a glass sheet if you have like maybe a glass pane, an old glass pane out of a picture frame or something or a glass mat. You can just put it right onto your mat. For today's purposes, I'm not putting it directly onto my glass media mat because it is black. It is reflecting the lights that are in my room. You can see some of it up here. So I'm having a hard time with the lighting for filming. So I'm actually going to take my Tim Holtz um, media mat, which goes on top of here. It's just a non-stick mat. Now, because it's alcohol ink, this mat will stain a little bit, but it still will mostly wipe up completely easy and not have a problem. So, um, I think you can also use this with some other non-stick mats. You can do alcohol inking on them as well. So, those are the kind of surfaces you want to be using this on. I would not use anything that's plastic because alcohol ink can stain plastic. Um, especially like acrylic blocks, things that are clear, you definitely don't want to be using these on because you're going to have some sort of tint that will be permanently on there from these. So today I'm going to be just working with some random different colors and we're just going to kind of play. I'm doing lemonade, mushroom, um, lettuce, and currant. And these are all Tim Holtz um, alcohol inks by Ranger. And then I'm also going to be using some alcohol blending solution. You can also use some isopropyl, isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol, but I don't um, particularly use that. I just prefer to use my alcohol blending solution. The alcohol is easy for um, making it um, clean up easy. And then I'll be using my little um, blower tool here in case I need to move anything around. So I'm just going to start by putting down some of the alcohol blending solution so our inks can kind of move around and blend together. And you just kind of just want to be a little on the liberal side with this stuff. That way we get lots of movement. And then, oh, and definitely, it's very strong, so definitely make sure your room or space is, um, oh my gosh, okay. So make sure your room are, is open and airy or you have a window or fan or air conditioner on something to air it out a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to just, just put some little drops just so we can kind of get something going here. I'm probably going to do two sheets, two backgrounds, maybe more depending on how much alcohol ink we end up with. Well, this stuff is dark so you want to kind of use it a little sparingly, but this is such a pretty color. And then we're going to add some green in here. Try not to make this autumn looking, but I feel like that's probably where it's going. Um, then I got some mushroom. Which, oh, I'm getting low on. Oh, that one's leaking too. We are going to do this aquamarine. I just feel like my color's a little too. I might add just a touch more of. I actually think I made might have just made a mistake because I got that yellow in there. My yellow is probably gonna end up changing colors. And then just a little bit more of this. You're gonna just place that down. And then kind of just move your fingers around a little bit. That's just to get the color underneath moving around. Oops. And it's okay if you get some on the back. Because. Okay. Whoa. Okay. So there you go. You all look at how pretty that is. And then if you want to go through 
while it's still a little wet you can move it around and you can also like pounce it back in the color if you missed a spot oh this is very summery yeah and I kind of lost the yellow it's kind of meshing into some of the other colors okay and then this is starting to dry because it is alcohol ink so we're just going to add some more of this and you can see how it starts reactivating the color and that's what you want and then I'm going to go ahead and take my second panel which should end up being a little on the lighter side or some of it at least and then you get more pretty kind of colors happening and then you can just keep going until you see and like what you're doing now you can of course go back in and add some more colors to your panel directly onto it and more alcohol alcohol ink or alcohol or the alcohol blending solution if you want to change up or add some color like I think I lost a lot of the purple so I might add a little bit more purple so it's just kind of playing around but I love this because I feel like it really makes the background start taking on just a beautiful kind of like look and then I'm gonna set this aside and I'll clean that up later but you have the first pull then you have the second one and you can see as it dries it just gets more pretty and then I'm going to take, where is this purple here? I'm not going to mess with this one. I really like this one. I'm probably going to create a card with this later. Um, and I'll probably attach it to the video too. But look how pretty that came out. It's just, it's like, it just reminds me of summer. That is summer. <laughs> okay, I'm going to set that aside to dry. And then this one here, I'm actually going to... Um, add in just a little bit of purple and then I'm going to save this panel for a future video because I have some other ideas and things I want to show you so I'm just going to add a little bit of purple and then not mess with it too much okay and then just add a little bit of this This is also a good way just to get a little bit more movement happening. And then this is to move around the color a little bit. Look at that purple and the blues moving. Oh my gosh. I love it. You can also use your finger if you got some areas that are um, didn't take the color. You just want to get just a little bit in there. There we go. And you know what? That is really it. There is not a lot to this um, for this technique. But I'm going to come back and share a card that I'm going to create with our first panel. And show you how you can just turn a really... Um, I mean, this looks like it took a long time. Now, this one in particular, because it was the first one we did, it's still not 100% dry because it took on most of the liquid. You can just set it aside to dry. You can use your heat tool, whatever you'd like. I'm just going to set it um, to dry for my next video, and I will go ahead and work on the first one, which is already dry because it was the second pull that we did. So... I will see you back in just a little bit. Okay, we are back. And now we are going to put the card together with our piece of um, alcohol ink background. This was the second one I did. Um, it had like the blues and just a little bit of some of the other colors, but mostly was the blue and green kind of background. And so what I did was I went ahead and I embossed it with the Spellbinders embossing folder it's really pretty it's um it's this one and it is called let's see 
don't know the name of it. Uh, Circles and Diamonds. There we go. It's called Circles and Diamonds. And it is a really pretty, and I thought it would be nice for the background. And then I went ahead and I just mounted it because this I found when I embossed the Yupo paper. And I don't think I mentioned this when I was doing the alcohol inking, and I don't know why. But I'm actually using... Um, Yupo paper. That is another thing you want to make sure you're using the appropriate paper when you're actually alcohol inking. So remember a glass surface or a non-porous surface unless you're okay with staining your non-stick mats. And then you, you need Yupo paper. I mean this also works with acetate or any paper that is um, has like a glossy finish on it is meant for this when I embossed it it became kind of flexible almost like plastic so I went ahead and I adhered it to some craft cardstock just to keep it nice and flat and sturdy and there was no so there was no buckling because I wanted to put it up on um, some pop dot or some foam tape if you wanted to just straight adhere that you can skip that step but I always like to um, put my stuff with a foam adhesive so I went ahead and made the card base. This is an A2 card base from uh, Nina Solar White 110 pound cardstock. And then I got this Thinking of You sentiment. That's from this uh, label sticker sentiment, which I find really helpful. Um, it has some other ones too, so it's really nice that I didn't have to stamp this. So I just took one from here. It comes with two sheets. And then I put it on some white Nina cardstock just I thought because I had the white background because I also cut this down to give a quarter inch border and I figured because this is a black the white would balance it out okay so I'm gonna go ahead and start adhering all this down and then pretty much that's it that's the card today's card and I really hope you guys enjoyed and see how you can turn some uh, really fun alcohol technique into a background and then also into a really nice card and it made this process really fun and different and I just love the way these came out.